So in this video I'm talking about Johnny Depp, Amber Heard, breathwork and recovering from abuse and narcissistic abuse for both women and men. So, you know, in that particular trial, it did go one way and the jury found Johnny Depp innocent. Um, but what I'm going to talk about will refer to both women and men. And I know in that trial, Johnny Depp won and I was kind of in favour of Johnny Depp, but I'm not a misogynist. On the other hand, there's the whole thing going on with Britney Spears, how she was abused by a man or men. I mean, multiple accounts, not physically, but in all sorts of ways. Um, I'm, I'm on her side there. Um, and it doesn't matter what side you came down on in, in the trial. We're just going to look at some basic principle of narcissistic abuse and how you can recover from that, how you can get out of that and how you can not <laughs> get involved in it in the first place. And I have to say with the trial with Johnny and Amber they're a team. Whatever happened, we don't know what happened there because there were snippets of conversations of a however long relationship, just snippets of conversation. So we don't know. But it was clear they both had a past of abuse. And they both were involved in drugs. And it seems, Johnny seems, from what was said and admitted to being more involved in drugs. And I think when I first started listening to it, I thought, oh God, look, my, one of my film stars is a drug addict since early teenage years and never stopped. And he's, look, he's abusing his wife now as well. Uh, so I started off, kind of, I didn't know Amber Heard, I just didn't know who she was. So I, I thought, well, yeah, probably Johnny. And then as I listened to the recordings, I thought, no, 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 no. That it, uh, Maybe he did some abuse, but when I listened to Amber saying, telling her, I'm not punching you, I'm hitting you. <laughs> And I, can't, and I can't say I'm not going to do it again. You know, when I hear that, I think, well, actually, she's abusive. It was, if that was the other way around, if that was Johnny saying, listen, Amber, I'm hitting you, I'm not punching you, ha it would have been all over. Do you know what I mean? So I kind of came down. Anybody who hits or punches anybody, either sex, for me, that's abuse. But in my personal journey, what it brought up, I think this is the important bit, I can feel the energies coming in as I'm talking about this. In my personal journey, what that hit on in me was the abuse I suffered from my mother. Because I was continually hit by my mother my, until I was too big for her to hit me. She may have thrown things at me after that, but I think, I don't know, I was about six or seven and she came up, and it was every day, and she came up and just gave me a big slap around the face and I just stood there. I hadn't cried, I didn't cry you know, for a long time. I've learned to be hard, don't cry when you hit. 
at all. And she hit, and I just stared her down. And she never, she knew she never hit me again after that. But the abuse, abuse, I don't know that physical abuse and hitting is the worst or, or any worse than psychological abuse or emotional abuse. But what I'm getting at here, I think in the global consciousness and the way women and men are, and how they play off between each other. I think it's quite hard for a man to admit that he's been abused by a woman. He's meant to be big and strong, how big, strong me, how could a woman ever abuse me? And I was like that, you know, I would complain when talking about my childhood, I would complain, well, she hitting me all the time. I was the scapegoat. My brother and sister didn't get hit. They got emotional abuse and stuff, but I was the bad one, the terrible one, always here, always needing to be admonished, always needing to be put in his place. So I would complain and say, she did this and she did that and this and that. And a lot of it, I was trying to make people believe that it actually happened. Because I, I was always told it was me, it was my fault. And then later, when I confronted uh, many years later, it just burst into tears. It never ever happened. You know, I had to ask my brother, did I get hit as a child and hard? And he said, and how? <laughs> you know? Yes, of course. But it's like, you're just paranoid, it, it didn't happen. So a lot of it was me just trying to say, it happened, it happened, and people would listen, but still in me, it's like, I don't know. And it took, it was nice to have my brother, because over the last few years, we've talked in conversation and swapped notes, and it becomes real at that point. So I think with an abuse, with the gaslighting that's going on, people have a bit, for women and men, people have trouble believing in themselves that they are being abused. And as I said, I might be wrong. Now, I complained about it, but I never said I was abused, that's just, you know, all of that, you say, I was abused by my mother. I never said that. I said, she did this, she did that, she hit me, she called me names, she continually dominated me, she continually run me down. But something about saying those words, I was abused by my mother. And I can feel the emotion going off in my stomach as I say those words. And it was when, and I feel the tears, and it was when Johnny Depp was on the witness stand. And they were saying something to him about abuse. And he said, yes, I was abused by Amber. He didn't say I was hit and she did this. You know, when you talk about it, you're going off at these different ages. You said, I was abused by Amber. Now, I don't know totally what the difference is, but there's a difference there. And I don't know if it's harder for women to say that as well, to say, to say, oh, they did this and they do that and they do Just say, I was abused by that person. I don't know, but I think there's a reluctance in men 
to say that because they thought they've got to look stronger. Women don't have to look strong, even though she is stronger in many different ways as part of that play. She doesn't go out to look the stronger one. So I, I, mean, I might be totally wrong. So it was interesting me, and that freed me up. When he said those words, I went, ah, I was abused by my mother. And that just cut all of the arguments, the internal dialogue, the penny dropped, I ground it. I was able to feel the pain. I was a little, I mean, it started before kindergarten. You know, my earliest memories of being hit by a ruler in kindergarten, thinking, well, What's that going to do? That's nothing <laughs> to what I get at home, <laughs> you know. So it was always there, but somehow it didn't really land until I said those words to myself. And I think Johnny Depp saying that and being a role model sent out a message across the whole earth. You know, you can almost feel it going around the earth. It's okay for me to say I was abused by a woman. And I'm hoping it converted, even though I think it's a different thing, it aided women to say, I was abused by man. Rather than arguing the case, I was abused. Because it, I think it puts you in a, not a victim mode, but not fighting against it anymore. No, that happened to me, but I'll come all right. <laughs> I managed to get my life together anyway. It helped me on my healing journey, so we're all right. I, I wouldn't have had the life, you know, I wouldn't have been into meditation, I wouldn't have gone into therapy, I would, these things, if I hadn't been abused. Avoiding the point, just, I was abused by my mother. Kind of cuts the crap and you can feel the emotions coming up and again I don't know if it's true but a lot of emphasis has been around on men abusing women there hasn't been so much or men abusing women and men abusing men because there's a physical element involved and definitely men physically abusing women is an uh, abhorrent thing. But for me also, even though a woman isn't as strong, you know, my mother, she was stronger than me, she four times my size, So how is that any different to a man hitting a woman who's half his size? You know, so it's like, oh, a woman can't hurt a man. A woman with a weapon can, a, a woman just going full out to attack a man or hit a man or, you know, there are lots of cases using tools of different things. A man who won't fight back can do plenty of damage. On not just physically, on psychological levels. I just think being hit, whether you get a physical damage or not, there is a psychological, I think we're getting it to here. So a woman being hit, there is the physical damage. But I think the psychological damage that keeps it in place is deeper.
because they're being made the victim or becoming the victim. So a man being hit, even though the damage isn't as bad, he's still being put in a subservient place and put down and made a victim. And I don't hear much also about women abusing women and it doesn't have to be physical you know and and I, I don't want to get into a fight women and men I'm just pointing out how I see it and I may be totally wrong and I'm not a misogynist because as I say as far as I'm concerned, Brittany got it worse than Johnny. Much, much, much worse abuse from men. I may do one about that as well. <coughs> I just think Johnny's case has had a global impli implications more strongly. And you also have to look back to where all of this has come from. It's no accident those two coming together and whatever played out there and whatever got shown on television, it's kind of just the surface play. For both of them, that started in childhood. Amber was abused by her dad, Johnny was abused by his mother. And for girls and little boys, for me that's kind of where it starts. And I know it's not always the case, I'm trying to avoid gender issues here, I know it's not always the case. But, to the main part, we're being mothered by our mothers. To the main part. They do the caring. Now, it may be equal these days, it's probably more equal, but in the past, certainly in my generation, the man went out and worked and the woman stayed at home. So there's a whole generation there of definitely where women were looking after the children and in some ways the men may come in and put in some discipline in that situation or their input or whatever but the women within themselves naturally take on that role. So these men who are going out and hitting women Where did that come from? It doesn't have to come from your mother abusing you. But give me a child of seven years and you will get the adult. We are programmed in that first seven years. So in different ways the, pro the parents play their program into the children. So maybe the mother was abused by her father or the other way round, you know, whatever way it is. And even though the mother isn't doing it, somehow that is pervade into the child. So, you, And it may come from the father. But So this court case goes off. But they're brought together to play something out. I mean, Johnny had a really damaged finger, but other than that, you no know, physical, you know, big, oh, I've lost my arm <laughs> thing gone on. Lost his reputation, got that back. Um, I've lost my thread there, but hopefully 
in that play they can release some of the karma and that's what I'm getting to is that how to release that karma that we play out lifetime upon lifetime because that has come from the mother or the father, their mother and father, their mother, you know, it goes back through the generations and we also bring it in from past lives. So we can work with it, with the angst of it. Now a lot of it is understanding and through that court case I kind of understood I was abused. I also, you know, I left very young and never really wanted to speak with my mother again. You know, my father wasn't seen, not because he didn't want to, he was thrown out by my mother when I was about nine. And then I was just taught to hate my father and men. A boy being taught to hate men and fathers, how they're terrible people and look, he's doing this, that and the other. And apparently he was trying to contact us and sending us letters. When I met him he said, he, he bro I was a broken man from it. How much truth he was telling, I don't know. Because later on it, it was too much for me, he didn't want to be in contact. Uh, so, I don't know, I keep on losing the thread, but, so I didn't want to be in contact with her, and then I went off to India, worked with Osho, healing, I, mean, I thought, well, let's try and mend this relationship with my mother. But then, it's still abusive. You can't, it's not like I'm the only one, my family's the only one, you know, everybody kind of, to, your mother's quite something and she doesn't really have any friends so it's it, 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 you know there is other evidence <laughs> other than me and so it, kind of abusive and at that point I just thought I can't mend that being by somehow working it out with her and having a good relationship that ain't the way this is going to work this is the other thing about being around narcissism. But at some point I had to break off again. And I energetically broke off. I did this figure of eight around me, sat in front of me, do a figure of eight to cut the ties. And then when I'd done it that instantly, this big next day I think, this this whole thing exploded where I just thought that's it, that's the end, I can't go near her, that just terrible thing for a mother to do, I just, I, that's it, that's it. It can't be healed in that realm, no matter, she's my love mother, she loves me in some way, I love her in some way, but this thing happens that is so sick and bad that it can't be resolved. Again, I think in any narcissistic, abuseful relationship, there's that, I've got to stay because he loves me, or this, or that. It's narcissistic abuse, get the fuck out, heal it in yourself at a distance. You can't you know, you, it doesn't work. I think it certainly wouldn't work with my mother. And I doubt it would work with many narcissists to say, well, have you ever thought of having therapy? <laughs> that, that just doesn't go down well. Or let's have therapy together. We'll both go to a therapist. And if it's a genuine narcissist, that just ain't going to go down so well. So I don't know that it's possible to heal it within the relationship. You do have to step out and you say, well, okay, I love them. They were my mother. They were their partner. I am attracted to them. They're funny. This is nice. There's a certain something in the relationship that will tether you 
assault you, bewilder you, and enslave you, and demonish you. And you have to get out of the situation. You have to get out of the spider web. And then heal it in yourself and find out what was it. Because you know, you see somebody and whatever the things are attracting, you know on one level they are some kind of psychopathic, narcissistic person. And there's something that's pulling you in there to play out being abused. Maybe your mother, maybe your past life, maybe inquisitiveness. But you can't go in there saying, I didn't know, I didn't know, it's all his fault. That doesn't work. If you approach it from, it's their fault. I'm an innocent, look at me, I'm an innocent victim. Nothing to do with me whatsoever. I'm innocent, nice, light-giving person, and that fucking bastard came along, entrapped me, and abused me, and I was nothing to do with that. It's their fault. <laughs> and even if as with Johnny Depp, there's a trial and it comes down, yep, yeah, he's the victim, she's the abuser. Doesn't matter. He's not the victim. She's not the abuser. It's a relationship. They both know what they were coming into and they both could have left at any point. So even though I was a baby, and I, well, what fucking choice have I got? She gave birth to me. Maybe I got pulled into it from a past life. Maybe you choose who your parents are going to be. Or just in dealing with it, You have to take responsibility for your side of it. You have to take responsibility for being the victim and somehow bringing that on yourself. Once, and it doesn't mean, oh, I'm a victim, oh, I don't know. it means just bringing it into an arena where you are responsible for it. Because if you're not responsible for it, you can't resolve it. Because to resolve it, you then have to go to the other person. But you have to take responsibility. Find some way of being responsible in yourself for whatever happened to it. And then that also gets rid of the hatred. Somebody else did it to me. I had an equal part in that. Then it's something I'm not blaming someone else. I, I don't know. I don't. don't I'm not really that big. That you know, I'm a breath work. I'm just talking about my own experience. But I had to be responsibility and not be blaming my mother as this terrible, terrible person did this diabolical thing. She had her own past. She had her own brokenness that pulled her to be in a certain way. I have no idea what happened to her in her childhood. And I have no idea what happened to her in past lives or whatever. So she has to con deal, con deal with her own side of it. And she thinks She's the victim in all of these things. She thinks she's the victim. And I think that's with many abusers. They 
think they're the victim. So you can't, if you're hating that person, you still can't resolve it. You have to break off, you have to get out. But then you can start dealing with it yourself. The best way, <laughs> loads of ways to deal with it. I have had remarkable movement forwards with this, with holographic breathing. Because holographic breathing takes you back into, not per se your mother's womb, but the state of intrinsically being in a womb in your own environment and evolving and being born and breastfeeding, but your own intrinsic quality. It starts untying your knots to whatever the karma is that have brought these things in. And because the movement of the mouth in holographic breathing is like a very subtle form of suckling. I can remember when it started, I brought it through and I started, started working for six months, I was thinking, this is sating not being breastfed. And also, I don't know how comfortable I was in my mother's womb, and I don't know how comfortable I was breastfeeding from I think it's always, you know, she watched, it, and it's not, it isn't just me, that, you know, all right, for me, for me, let's just say, to, uh, quite a heavy duty person, and as an image, I, think, I don't know how much I would have enjoyed that or feeling, but it somehow released that in myself, being able to be with that within myself, rather than as a memory of being with it with the mother. It will play those memories out and they will release. So it goes back to that arena where you can untie the knots at a very early age and before, because we go back through conception, we connect to the other side. And also what helps in holographic breathing is the energies traveling through the brain. Because the kundalini starts going off in holographic breathing, it moves through the spine, it moves through the brain. And we have all of these structures that are laid upon us or we take on from our childhood. They're all patterns in our brain, the kind of mind is born around the physical structures, nerve pathways, energy pathways of the brain. And as the kundalini rises through the brain, it doesn't go through those structures that we've laid out. It opens up its own natural structures in line with nature and in line with the higher self. So as it transverses through the brain and you become more a viewer and just watching this karma unfold, it connects you to your original matrix rather than what has happened to you. So you just start drifting away from whatever it is. You still kind of have to deal with those different things, but you don't get into a cycle of just going round and round and round and round and round and always being in that. As it goes through the brain, there's an alternative there because you are not that. You are not that conditioning. You are something much, much bigger. And then as the crown chakra ohms and it connects to the higher self and higher self isn't conditioned like that. The divine beings on is a whole new level coming. So again, it will take the blocks out. You still have to be willing to view those, but it's in a much gentler way and in hues and colors and things. And as it clears through the spine, it clears your past life karma. So what happens to you this lifetime pales 
and there's a whole universal thing releasing and happening there. So a holographic breathing is a spiritual work in a way. And will help you clear your traumas, whatever they may be, whether you're a man or a woman or whatever. I know this particular talk started off from a very particular trajectory about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard and the two different camps and there's male female battles going on. But in the end it's the same for everyone. The breath. For me, holographic breathing, the channels that come to me and the connection to the earth. So I wanted to make this video. I didn't really know what it was going to be about, but now I'm very glad that I did. I have free webinars about once a month. I have advanced webinars every Sunday. There are recorded free webinars on my website or on YouTube. Please come and learn holographic breathing and enjoy holographic breathing. I hope you've enjoyed my webinar. If you have, please like it at the bottom. Please subscribe. Please write comments. I will always answer the comments. And please learn holographic breathing. All the basic learning of it is completely free of charge. So learn holographic breathing. And good luck with whatever you're dealing with and whatever is going on in your world. All right, thank you and goodbye.